welcome to PSP Hacking 101. And the uh, first thing we're going to cover here is getting homebrew applications to run on the PlayStation Portable system. Excellent. What you have to do is pick up a PSP. What you want to make a note of is that you buy a version A. This means that it has a version 1.5 firmware, which is the only one that is capable of running homebrew apps at this time. So, first you got to buy a PSP. You want to make sure that that PSP is a firmware version 1.5. There's newer versions of the PSP that have been shipping in the last month or so. 1.51 and 1.52. And you don't want to get those. So what you have to pick up is a Sony PlayStation portable that has the Spider-Man 2 logo on it. Or if you look at the serial number on the box. <coughs> on the back of the PSP box by the barcodes, it will be either an A or B or nothing at all located be below 120 V. So basically, don't buy it if it says B. <laughs> exactly. So look by the serial number. If there's, if there's an A, it's OK. But if there's a B, don't buy it. If there's nothing, that's cool. And it probably has a Spider-Man logo on the box, and it comes with a Spider-Man UMD. Lucky you. Or if you actually get to see the unit, you can go in a menu system and look and check on the firmware. Make sure it's 1.5. And whatever you do, don't go to the update section and do not upgrade to 1.51 or 1.52 because then you will no longer be able to fix, run... There's home. no downgrade method. Yeah, at the present time of this video podcast, there's no downgrade method, so you're, you're and stuck. And as of right now, the only game that updates your firmware is Dead to Rights, and it only updates it to version 1.50, so even then you're still all right. Yeah, so if you get a Japanese version and you run Dead to, Dead to Rights, then it's not a big deal. You just have, it's just a little bit different method of running homebrew applications. And right now, almost everybody caters to the 1.5 because it's the most popular uh, BIOS version of the firmware. Yeah. The other thing we're going to cover is we're going to cover recommended accessories when you buy your PSP. One of those things, if you're going to be running homebrew applications, you're going to want a big memory stick so you can run lots of homebrew applications and mainly the ROMs for emulators. <laughs> uh, mo mainly the, the game rips. Those are the big oh, ones. Oh, you don't want to say anything about the game rips. Because, you know, if you get people <laughs> Home start... Homebrew apps, yes. <laughs> there are some methods of loading UMD games and playing them off a memory stick. They're not totally perfected yet. But they're getting there. But they're getting there. But we totally urge people to buy games that you like because if you don't buy them, they're going to stop making PSPs and then and we're we going to have another Dreamcast on our hands. Yeah, and we won't be doing any more shows. <laughs> uh, the other thing you're going to need is you're going to need a USB cable because without that, you're not going to be able to load the applications onto your PSP. Well, I take that back. You could all, you could use a uh, memory stick duo writer, but we've had comp we've had problems with those adapter sleeves. Yeah, the adapter sleeves, and they're just kind of cumbersome. It's a lot easier just to go with the USB cable. You have it treated as a USB mass storage and, and, device. Yeah, it's a mass storage device. It's 2.0. It's very fast. Sometimes the the other ways of using the memory stick aren't as quick. <laughs> Windows Explorer, drag and drop. Yeah, on my, on my laptop, it, it just kept interrupting and dying halfway through loading stuff on it for some weird reason. Which brings me to another point. When you do pick up a larger memory stick, one thing to keep in mind is to go with the SanDisk brand. Number one, it's cheaper. A lot cheaper. Number two, people have been saying it's a lot faster than the Sony brand ones. That's true. I have a Sony memory stick and I have a SanDisk memory stick and the speed of the SanDisk is about twice as fast as the Sony. Sony also makes a high-speed brand, but it's way yeah, it's, more expensive. It's a lot more expensive, and I'd personally go for more storage than speed. And if that's the case, go with the SanDisk. They're faster. They're cheaper. You can pick up a gigabyte memory stick for under hundred dollars. It's less than. That's about the same as two games. So it's it's the way to go. Uh, I've got a whole bunch of apps on my PSP, and I've got some ROMs and video games that I like and own. It's true. He does own them. Except for some. Yeah. <laughs> oh. You can also run uh, ROMs that are in the public domain. There's a lot of homebrew, uh, homemade ROMs that people have made right, and released. Right. And they're totally free and they're legal to run. And with the exception of Sony not being 
too happy about running how they made it. Yeah, that's how, the biggest thing. Yeah, Sony's not too excited about people running their own maps on the PSP. But other than that, it's cool to run the homebrew stuff. The other thing we want to uh, oh, that's what we're talking about right now: the homebrew applications and emulators. Um, take a look here. What do we got? What are the most popular homebrew applications and emulators to run on the Sony PSP? Well, personally, or do you want the list of all of them? Well, if you go online, do a Google search or whatever, you can go to like PSPupdates.com or there's, there's a million sites out there. Um, but like the one I use all the time just for fun is this uh, SNX 9X for PSP. And it's just awesome. It plays... Um, all the Super Nintendo ROMs, it, uh, it lets you overclock the PSP to 333 megahertz, where it normally runs at 222 megahertz. Um, it's a very playable speed for like 95% of the ROMs out there. I've been playing like Lemmings and uh, Mario and it works great. Uh, the other emulators out there, the, there's a PSP Genesis which does a really great job of playing all the old Sega Genesis games, if you're into all the old Sonic classics. Uh, there's also computer emulators. There's an Amiga 500 emulator out there, PSP UAE. And if you're an Amiga If enthusiast. you're an Amiga fan, you can load up a whole bunch of floppy disks on here. If you've got your old floppy disks from the Amiga, there's, there's ways of converting them. Uh, you do need the Kickstart ROM from the Amiga OS in order to run this emulator. And if you buy a little program called Amiga Forever, it's a great emulator on the PC. It's legal and it co comes with a bunch of apps and emulators. And There's also, I can't say Bejeweled because this guy got sued. He had to change it. The new version of this Bejeweled clone is called uh, Polygons or Polygon. And it's a very good little clone of Bejeweled and it's free and it runs on the PSP. It's a homebrew app. What so. did he change the graphics to? They sued him. Well, I mean, what did, he, oh. what did he end up using after he got Just his homemade ones that looked pretty much the same. <laughs> kind of like Yahoo's take on Bejeweled? Yeah. Uh, yeah, everybody in the, under the sun's coming out with their own Bejeweled clone. In fact, there's a Lumines clone for um, the PC now. And it's pretty good from what I hear. I haven't tried it myself. But um, Another thing to note is that uh, most of the emulators, emulators support a... CPU speed of 333 megahertz. Um, this is the actual native speed of the CPU for the PSP. However, all of the games right now clock it down to 222 megahertz. When you're running your emulators at 333 megahertz, you're going to drain your battery faster. Um, so far, nobody's reported having their PSP damaged by running it in 333 megahertz, as he has said. But yeah, I've been running on, I run everything at 333 megahertz. Because it, you actually, due to the... It, it looks a lot smoother. Well, I mean, I'm <laughs> just saying because they're, they're not fully optimized yet for right. the PSP. Because they're, they, it's, it's entirely, in the CPU, it's entirely emulated. The emulators and homebrew scene is, is relatively new, and everybody's just now learning it. And they're just now porting all these applications. And they yeah. haven't quite gotten... To yeah. using the graphics, yeah, you want to keep processing on, for optimization. Yeah, you want to keep on top of um, these um, uh, these sites that have all the apps and games on them because they're constantly updating them. Like every single day, they're coming out with new revisions and they're coming out with you know faster graphics, new functionality, and it's just it's a lot of fun to go out there and just see all the new things that people are creating for the PSP and 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 currently there's you don't physically have to modify the PSP to play these things, which is a big difference from. All the a other lot systems. Of other consoles, yeah. Yeah, you know the the DS is you gotta you gotta you need hardware to do something with that, and the power of it isn't there, and it's it's you know Xbox requires a lot of soldering. Yeah, the Xbox. <laughs> you know, there, there there are ways that don't require soldering, but it, this by far is the simplest system to get these homebrew applications and emulators working on, and it's portable. You can take it with you. And the cost of doing it is extremely low. It's a lot of fun. Uh, and it's the newest on the scene. Yeah, it's a lot the, of the newest, the newest on the scene. I, I see, you know, we were following like the Xbox uh, scene, and it just it slowed down. A lot of the people jumped on the PSP bandwagon, and they're just, they're just going nuts on this, and they're just writing like crazy. And 
just coming out with all these things. You can get the weather on this. You can do VNC, which allows you to control your home computer from anywhere as long as you got a static IP. And that's come from the uh, advent of people discovering how to use the Wi-Fi on it. And with that enabled, it leaves a lot of room for potential applications, especially homebrew apps, homebrew games, multiplayer, or chat. I mean, chat, you know, that's experimental. Yeah. You could use little smileys and post them to other PSPs. A lot of cool stuff coming out for the PSP. Stay tuned to this website. <laughs> it doesn't exist we yet. Don't have a website yet. We don't have a website yet, but we It'll will. We'll be called PSP Hacking 101. Oh, yeah, PSP Hacking 101. Hey, do a search and see if the domain's open. <laughs> uh, what?